So in the series of learning C programming, we are done with file handling concepts in C, but we are left with one important concept in C that is dynamic memory allocation. So in this video, we will see that thing, right? What is dynamic memory allocation? How this is different from static memory allocation? How memory can be allocated dynamically means use of, uh, you know, which function you will use for dynamic memory allocation, how to use those function in your program and everything we will see about dynamic memory allocation. This video is about basics of dynamic memory allocation. You can say it's like introduction to DMA, dynamic memory allocation, right? And the difference between static memory allocation and dynamic memory allocation. We'll see this thing in this video, right? Later on, in the later videos, we'll see everything about dynamic memory allocation, like the use of functions and everything with the help of programs. Now let's see what is dynamic memory allocation. See generally we say dynamic memory allocation means allocation of memory at runtime. And what is static memory allocation? Memory would be allocated at compile time. And in DMA memory would be allocated at runtime. But see, memory would not be allocated at compile time. At compile time what happens? See generally suppose you have written a program. I am writing a program here. Simple program. Like I am just taking two integer variables. I am just asking the user to enter the value of A and B. I am just printing, printing the value. So this is a simple program. At compile time what happens? The program is in English language, high level language. So com you know, computer cannot understand this language. So at compile time this would be converted into OBJ file or you can say object code, right? So at this time, more precisely if I say memory would not be allocated at compile time, right? Because once program would be in main memory, then only we can allocate memory from RAM, from the main memory. But at compile time, we are just converting this code into obj file, then dot exe file, then linking and loading would be done and everything, this process would be done. And then while executing the pro program would be loaded in main memory and at that time memory would be allocated to these variables. Then why we say that SMA means memory would be allocated at compile time. So more precisely if I say then it means at compile time it would be fixed like for A and B the data type is integer so 4 bytes would be allocated for A and 4 bytes would be allocated for B. In traditional compiler it's 2 bytes and in some you know compiler in some machine it's 4 bytes. It depends, right? So in some machine integer take 2 bytes and in some integer take 4 bytes. But now in my machine it is taking 4 bytes so that is why I am taking 4 bytes. So now at compile time it is fixed now, fixed. You can say it's fixed memory allocation that 4 bytes would be allocated to A, 4 bytes would be allocated to B. At run time you cannot change this thing. So this is what exactly static memory allocation, right? Memory would be allocated at run time only, right? But at this point of time, at compile time only it is fixed like 4 bytes would be allocated to this, 4 bytes would be allocated to this. This is what exactly means at, you know, by uh, static memory allocation, right? And dynamic memory allocation mean, means memory would be allocated obviously at run time and it is not fixed at compile time only that this, these bytes would be allocated only. No, at run time only the memory would be allocated and that can be modified according to your programming needs. You can increase or decrease the memory space according to your programming needs. But in static memory allocation, it's not like that. At runtime, you cannot increase or decrease the memory which is allocated to you. Suppose I have taken an array in this program, int, I have taken an array, array 5. So it is fixed that at compile time only that how many bytes would be allocated? 5 into 4 that is 20 bytes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? 5 elements you can store and 20 bytes would be allocated. This is fixed now. But at run time, suppose, suppose you are using only, you are entering only 1, 3, minus 1. Only 3 values. So these 2 space, these 4 and 4, 8 bytes are, you can say it's wastage of memory, right? Because I am entering only 3 values. Or maybe at run time you want to enter 7 values. Can you do this? No. In static memory allocation, we cannot do this because only for 5 elements memory has been allocated. So we cannot enter 7 elements. So this is what you can say drawback of static memory allocation. You have fixed this size. Suppose when we are, you know, in a program, we want to take some names of students. So generally we take what? 
like in program we take care and str so we take maximum size suppose i am taking 50 so in this you can take any name like i'm one name i'm taking jenti khatri one name i'm taking only jenny one is you can say pradeep one is you can say uh, sonu so for this only four bytes memory we have used and remaining bytes remaining 46 bytes wastage of memory in this one two three four five five bytes only we have used remaining 45 wastage of memory like this right so this is what wastage of memory in this case because memory has been allocated this is fixed we cannot change this at runtime we cannot free this memory at runtime in static memory allocation whatever memory you has been allocated you cannot free that memory at runtime after the exit from the program only memory would be freed so it's you can say in static memory allocation memory cannot be reused this memory is fixed for 50 you can say 50 bytes so whatever name you will enter like pradeep i am entering 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 only 7 bytes i am using remaining 43 bytes 40 how many bytes we have you know are remaining that are wastage of memory and memory is very crucial resource we are not you know we we, are, we don't care about memory because we are writing small small programs so we take enough space at the starting of the program and we don't care about wastage of memory but when we you know create you know when we are doing any you know large com you know computation or you are creating software or in industries right at that point of time you have to take care of memory right so from now only it's a good practice to take care of memory right you at least you have some idea like this is wastage of memory and i should not use this memory that's a good practice you know these small small things you can say create a difference between a good programmer and a bad programmer right so it's a good practice always to save memory because memory is very crucial resource right so at least you have some idea about dynamic memory allocation static memory allocation how memory is you are wasting how much memory you are wasting and you don't have any idea right now while writing the programs right so now see at runtime you cannot increase or decrease the size of allocated memory right suppose I, at this point of time i want to enter 10 element in the array we cannot do this if you are entering 3 it is wastage of memory right so to remove these drawbacks i hope now these drawbacks are clear to you of static memory allocation right so to remove these drawbacks another concept came that is dynamic memory allocation memory can be allocated and deallocated at runtime right according to your programming needs memory would be allocated at allocated at runtime that is that can be modified according to your programming needs in dynamic memory allocation right now how this happens we have some functions for this thing malloc calloc realloc and free these four functions we will discuss these four function in detail one by one right but right now i think the difference between sma and dma is clear to you or oh, let me just discuss some more points about dma then i guess you will have you know more precisely you will have idea what is dma and how this is different from sma right first of all you must have some idea about the memory layout how memory would be allocated to a program in how many segments see basically four segments are there one is for code or you can say text instructions you know from this memory section one memory section is for global variables or static variables the global variables and static variables will take memory from this memory section one is stack and one is heap right heap is it's like you can say a big free pool of memory so whenever you allocate memory using dynamically using this method always the memory would be allocated from heap right dynamic memory allocation would be done from heap only it's like a it's uh, you know big pool of free memory you can use this memory you can allocate this memory you can deallocate this memory at runtime right and stack and heap always grow in opposite direction if stack is growing in this direction heap will grow in this direction right 
and from the whole memory stack part will take limited size let's suppose stack part is taking only 2 mb whenever you write any program and in stack in stack from this memory all the local variables and functions will you know take memory from this part stack part right now see always the program if suppose outside main we have a global variable int i this is also having two parts for initialized segment and one is uninitialized segment in detail the memory layout we can discuss in a separate video if you want me to upload this video you can write down in comment box right suppose we have a global variable int i is equal to 10 this is global outside main so that this i would take space from this memory segment right and if you have some uninitialized int a we haven't initialized this this also will take from this segment but there are two segment one is initialized one is uninitialized right now always the program would be started from main so one stack frame from this stack one stack frame would be allocated for main function now in main we have local variables ab so these ab would be memory would be allocated from this stack for this ab we are going to enter the value and then printf means again we are going to call a function that is printf so one stack frame for print printf after doing this operation right then you can say scanf and then again printf and scanf and after executing this printf this scanf the these function would be removed from the memory and after that return zero then main would be returned main would be you can say freed from this memory after return zero statement right so now this is how memory would be allocated you can say it's it is what we are not using dynamic memory allocation in this we are only using static memory allocation right if you want to use dynamic memory allocation in this case then you will need pointer you cannot use the concept of dma without pointer this is very important or you can say this is one application of pointer right and many data structure almost every data structure stack linked list tree queue every data structure use the concept of dma right now without pointer you cannot use the concept of dma now what will happen if you use dma in this case first of all you are going to create a pointer so here suppose i am creating a pointer in star p so this is what yeah in star p means this is what static memory allocation so this pointer p would be in main now we have a pointer p this is static memory allocation right but at run time i am going to tell using these functions malloc calloc realloc or free right using these function i am going to tell like i need 10 bytes of block so those 10 bytes of block would be allocated from this heap this block of 10 bytes suppose or you can say 8 bytes and this pointer would point this pointer would point to this block using this pointer only we can access this memory and the base address this pointer would contain what base address of this block right using this pointer only we can store some value we can access the value from this block and all another thing which is very important is it's your responsibility to free this memory after you are done with this memory once you have used this memory and you are done you don't need this memory any more in your program right now you have to free this memory using this free function this is very 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 important if you will not free this concept if you will not free this memory suppose at some time i have done the i have initialized this pointer after that pointer is equal to null so it is not pointing to this memory anymore but still this memory would be counted in your program use in your program's memory use and suppose you have now created another pointer and you now suppose you need 50 block 50 bytes of memory now this has been allocated to you but this is still in your use you haven't free this memory one more block you have taken one more one more block you have taken 
right but you are not freeing these blocks the previous blocks right so at some point of time it would be exhausted maybe right so once you are done with the use of the block make sure to free that block of memory so simple concept a simple syntax is there just write down free and the pointer name suppose i am taking pointer name p just write down this thing that's it now it's a, it's totally depends on your understanding how precisely you are getting these dynamic memory allocation location concept you can use this free it's not like that you can use this free statement this free function after the end of the program like in the end of the program no in between these programs in between any program like two or three times in a program you can use free statement so it's up to you like it's up to your understanding how clearly you have understood these concept how clearly you have understood this dynamic memory allocation concept then only you can use this free uh, function you know many times in your program so better if you have used this memory free this memory again you can take another block if you have used this memory you are done with this again free this block this is always a good practice so this is what you can allocate and deallocate memory at run time so once you have freed this block now again you can use in the same program right so this is what reusability in dynamic memory allocation memory can be reused but in static memory allocation memory cannot be reused because we cannot free the memory we have taken like int a b so we cannot free this memory during the execution of the program after exit from the program yes this memory would be freed but during execution you cannot free so memory cannot be reused this is one more you can say drawback of sma or you can say advantage of dynamic memory allocation i hope you can write these you know points according to yourself in your language only right so now i guess the basics of dynamic memory allocation is clear to you from the heap part memory would be allocated dynamically and statically from the stack part right so now using these functions we can allocate memory dynamically but use of these function we will discuss one by one in the next video we will see the use of malloc function with the help of a program right so one assignment for you is you are supposed to write down the difference between static memory allocation and dynamic memory allocation right you can write down that thing in comment box so now i'll see you in the next video till then bye bye take care